They're here to wake you up, pick you up, and lift you up. Steve, Therese, and Randy on Family Life. A friend you can turn to. Talk about an employee that goes above and beyond at work. And wouldn't you know it got her fired. Uh Uh-oh. This girl's name is Emily. She works at a bank call center. So, I mean, think about it. She's taking call after call after call. This one customer said, my card isn't working. I'm at a gas station trying to put gas in my car. I'm stuck here. I can't pay. And I know my paycheck went in. What's going on? So Emily looks. Sure enough, direct deposit went in. There's funds available. For some reason, there's a glitch. Can't figure out what's going on. Wait, where are you? That's not far from the call center. Hold on. You stay right there. Emily logs out. She gets in her own car, drives to the gas station, <laughs> gives the guy $20 of her own money, says, we're going to figure this out, hmm. you know, but in the meantime, put some gas in your car, goes back to work, and she gets fired for unauthorized interaction with a customer. Wow. And I get that there has to be policies like sure. that, but man, it's so hard to find people that would go above and beyond like that. So no big surprise. Yeah, there are other banks who are like, come work for us. You can come work for us. Come on, give me a promotion, more money. So right now, Emily's just trying to figure out what she's doing. But, you know, sometimes things will get you fired in one place and get you hired someplace else. And sometimes that's just God saying, nah, I want you to be over here. Right. You know we're friends because we're already on a first-name basis. It's Family Life Mornings with Steve, Therese, and Randy from Family Life, a friend you can turn to. There could have been one, maybe more, historic babies born. And here's what I'm saying. First ever. Yesterday, you may have heard already, it was the palindrome day on the calendar. Palindrome meaning the same forwards and backwards. And right. And 0202. 2020 and you do that forwards or backwards in the eight digit manner that we do in the United States and it's the same 0202 2020 now it's fascinating also because worldwide the same thing because some countries don't do it in that order on the date but here's why I'm thinking it could be historic because there could have been a baby born yesterday and it could be the first baby or babies born and alive on multiple palindrome dates Hear me out. The next one is coming 101 years from now. So mm-hmm. potentially mm-hmm. they could be alive uh, on December 12th, 2121, 100 years, 101 years ago, or I mean ahead of now. Mm-hmm. Right. Here's yeah. why I don't think it's ever happened before. The previous time yeah. the palindrome had happened <laughs> is November 11th. 11, 11. Yeah. <laughs> like 900, 900 years, years ago. Years ago. <laughs> you were there, right? Well, <laughs> no. Hey, Methuselah, where are you? <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> a new day, a new start, a God who never changes. You're waking up with Family Life Mornings. I always forget, you know, that you're supposed to be prepared. There's certain mm-hmm. things that you're supposed to have in your car True. when we get those cold days. Think, well, okay, like uh, water. You should have water with mm-hmm. you uh, for snow. Maybe you should have like a shovel. You should have maybe some sand or some kitty litter or something maybe to okay. get you um, a blanket. Blanket's always good to have. You know, it's so funny because the other day I looked in the back of my car. Right. I don't have any of those other things, but I was like, a blanket. There's a blanket Yay. in my car. I was like, I'm officially winning at being an adult, right? Right. Good. And then I realized Really, it was just because I took the blanket to the movie theaters, and then I forgot to bring it back into the wait house. A minute. You ta- wait a minute. You actually take a blanket inside to the movie theater? Yes. It's cold in there. Yeah. I mean, the AC is, like, always on. I'm always right. cold. And our movie theater has, like, those reclining seats. And right. so you just You're make really- it be like a- they sell them in the lobby now. They're, like, 15 wow. bucks each, so I bring my own. I guess that's not a bad idea, really, when I think about it because now there's a place to catch all that popcorn that i drop exactly you know, you take a blanket load home of popcorn <laughs> extra treat facing a brand new day is a whole lot easier when you remember that god is in charge this is family life mornings with steve Therese, and randy seems like there's so many dips that we serve on Super Bowl Sunday. It's like you could put all kinds of food in all kinds of sauces. So we found this list of the top five foods that we dip in America and asked you to put together the list. All right. What's your name? Hey, my name's Christopher Anolian. Absolutely. Chicken wings. Chicken wings are not on the list of top five. I don't believe that list. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon from Bolivar. Celery. Celery is number five. Ooh, there's one. 
Um, my name is Sherry. I am from a little town called North Point. Carrots. Carrots are number four. Ooh, Good job. We're getting there. Joy, Whitney Point. Well, chips. Did somebody already say that? Nobody has said chips. Chips are number two. Woo. Ooh, nice. Chat from Fort Byron, in New York. I'm going to try French fries for an answer. French fries are number one. Wow, are they really? Yes. Wow, wow that is amazing. Awesome. Yeah. There's so many things you can dip fries in. I mean, That's there's true. Ketchup, ketchup. There's mayonnaise, Ooh. ranch dressing, Frosties. You could dip Relish. French fries in milkshake. Like Frosties. Relish on French fries? <laughs> Yeah, that is amazing. You should try that. Wow. I think I might have to. Well, we'll be back in just a minute. We have to go get some French fries and relish. That's a, that's a new one. French fries and relish. I know. So, right, okay, so that leaves the five. Okay. Yeah, number three. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you some clues and see if right, you see can, if can figure it out. Okay. okay. Right. Uh, how about barbecue sauce, sweet and sour sauce, Polynesian sauce, ranch sauce, Chick fil A sauce, chicken. Nuggets. nuggets. Chicken nuggets are number three wow. on the list. I mean, you got to consider all the school cafeterias and all the moms serving them up on Tuesday nights. And it's <laughs> like, hey, kids, dip those chicken nuggets in whatever you want. Please excuse our enthusiasm. We just love spending time with you. Family Life Mornings with Steve, Therese, and Randy. So what do you collect? Uh, unusual, unique things. Joe from Attica texted us that uh, he said, it's not him, actually, it's his house that huh. actually collects things, dust bunnies. Uh, thanks, uh, Joe. That's uh, nice. Uh, like <laughs> practically a little farm there. Exactly. Good morning. <laughs> Who's this? My name's Jennifer. I'm from Corfu, and I collect animated singing stuffed animals. Animated Do you ever sing- turn them all on at the same time? <laughs> all the time. Don't you make me want to Anytime I'm in a store, if I see one of those and it's got like a little sticker on it that says press here, I have yes. to. Right? You have to. <laughs> that is funny. You do. Any, any holiday, if they have one out, I get one. Wow. And you know, if people are overstaying their welcome at your house, you just fire just all bring those. Them out. Yeah. <laughs> The kids love them, but the adults just give me a dirty look. Right, that's, that's fabulous. I have a collection of presidential campaign memorabilia going back to the close to a Blinken's time. Wow. Do you want to many... hear? Do you want to hear your wife's take on that? She called earlier. Oh, you Julia, wanna... what she say? I'm calling to tell you, my husband collects pictures of dead people. Well, oh, that's there's that. a little awkward. <clears throat> Oh, yes, it you was. Married, you married a funny one there. <laughs> yeah, I have one room in my house with over 150 posters in it going back to 1880. Uh-huh. Wow. I bet that's her favorite room. Yeah, yeah. You're waking up with the show that keeps it clean for you and your kids. Family Life Mornings. I say Thomas Edison. What do you think about? Light bulb. Inventor. Okay, inventor, scientific guy, right? Yeah. Would you think hopeless romantic? Never, th- never, no. never occurred Would to me. Not have crossed your mind at all. I just read that Thomas Edison. I mean, he obviously knew Morse code because it was like more popular then than it is now. Sure. But he and his wife would had like a thing where they would be like in a room with family, and they would like Morse code into each other's hand to uh, like secretly talk. Huh. And I and so me, you know, because it's February fifth, thinks. Oh, they probably quoted like "I love you." Like I almost want to learn like Morse code for "I love you," so I could do that to Scott. But then I think to myself, if this were any other time of the year, Uh I wouldn't think, "Oh, what a romantic guy!" I would think that he was Morse coding. Man, my family is making me crazy. How soon do you think we can get out of here? (laughs) Was her first name Dot? By the way, (laughs) Dot 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 Dot. You can either roll over and go back to sleep, or you can get going right now with Steve, Teresa, and Randy. This is Family Life, a friend you can turn to. Now, I have my own love language. It's called haiku. (laughs) Um, You know, the five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. Uh And I thought, well, with Valentine's Day uh, coming up uh, here very, very shortly, it's, uh, I think, time for a little haiku. A Valentine's Day haiku? I think so. Okay. I mean, you can use this if you'd like. I'm thinking of getting a card and maybe... You know, sending it to Audrey. You know, mm-hmm. it goes something like this. Five syllables, seven syllables, five syllables. Love is in the air, but so is influenza. Wash your dirty hands. <laughs>
If it's too early for you to start thinking about real life, it's okay. You can hang out with us as long as you want. This is Family Life Mornings. What would run through your mind if you got a message from your local post office telling you that all of your mail wouldn't fit through your front door? Oh, it's because I'm so popular. <laughs> my my yes. first thought would be, what did my wife order now? Man, right. It's like, come on, what's going on? Well, Dan Kane had 55,000 letters waiting for him. All right. And all of them were <laughs> identical. All of them telling the date and the amount due on his daughter's college loan. Whoops. And ironically enough, the statements were all incorrect. <laughs> so he's got 55,000 letters, and they're wrong. Well, the company that was behind the fiasco said they're going to fix the glitch that happened. And they said they would send him another statement, this one being the correct one. Oh, that's nice. 55,000. Let's see. Huh. Birthday cards, that would be nice. Yeah, that's okay. Cards, yeah. yeah. Oh, income tax return checks. <laughs> I'm, I'm right. in on that. <laughs> Family Life Mornings with Steve, Therese, and Randy. Thanks for making us part of your day. We're a friend you can turn to. There are some appliances that actually frighten me. Mm. Uh, for example, the Instapot. I will not get an Instapot. I know all my friends say you can make dinner in like 4.2 minutes, but I'm just afraid that the top is going to go flying off this thing. <laughs> and, and I know that's like never happened to anybody, but uh, I would have that happen to me. Mm-hmm. And so it just scares me. So I just take a little bit longer to make dinner. But when it comes to kitchen tools, does anything scare you? Like, are you afraid of like big kitchen knives or anything like that? Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the huge knife because, mm-hmm. you know, there, there always could have a, a, a bad instant happen. Mm-hmm. You know, that would yeah, be a bad thing. Yeah. yeah. Would right. you believe a third of people are afraid of whisks and measuring cups? I do not have the fear of the whisk <laughs> or the measuring cup. Why? Yeah, that would be I my, don't yeah. know why. Like, I'm like, <laughs> what? what? But that's not even the most intimidating kitchen utensil Uh number one yeah the spatula oh like the rubbery thing oh i love the spatula well i know as a kitchen tool but i'm thinking maybe it goes back to when we were a child can you just picture your mother with the spatula i'll get you (laughs) you better clean up your room right now hope you don't mind that we started the show without you we just couldn't wait family life mornings with steve therese and randy Hopping up 36 sets of stairs doesn't sound all that, all that great. You know, what an accomplishment. <laughs> Big deal. Right, right. Anybody can do that. But for Li Longlong of China, it was a huge deal because he actually set a new world record by hopping up those 36 stairs. Huh. Because the only part of his body to touch all 36 stairs... His head. Wait a minute. His Ow. head. Wait a minute. Like he didn't use his hands? He just, how do you? No how hands. Do you, do you All know? he used was his head. He had a pretty strong kick with his legs. Wow, I guess. Shot him up and landed and talk about balance. Yeah. I mean, that's what I call a head start. <laughs> no. This Guinness World Record brought to you by Excedrin. <laughs> It's Steve, Teresa, and Randy on Family Life, a friend you can turn to. 2020 is making me sick. Why is that? <laughs> they say that this year, 2020, mm-hmm. is going to make people more sick than last year did or huh. next year will. Hmm. So if you get sick this year, don't be surprised. A lot of it has to do with... Well, what's going to happen in New Hampshire and then what's going to happen this November and (laughs) when we're in an election year, especially a contentious election year, which I feel like this one has the potential to be. You think? It's stressful for us. It's stressful. And our Hmm. bodies are not meant to live in stress for eight, nine, ten months in a row. And so all that stress makes you susceptible to all kinds of things and not just colds and flus, but, you know, other physical ailments. Your body can't handle stress. So when you feel it coming on, you know the signs of stress when you're kind of barking at the people around you and you Mm -hmm. feel kind of tense all the time. You gotta like turn off the TV. You gotta mm. stop reading the internet. You don't gotta comment on all the stuff you see online. A little serious, a little silly, a perfect balance to start your day. Family Life Mornings.